We saw Liam Neeson solve a mystery on a plane, and now he is here to solve a mystery on a train. Will this be just as much fun as non-stop in my opinion? Let's see. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review non-stop to, I mean, I mean, The Commuter. So The Commuter is directed by Hame Colette Serra and the film stars Liam Neeson, Vera Farmiga, Jonathan Banks, and plenty of others. So The Commuter tells the story of this man named Michael who was a former police officer and he now works as an insurance agent and he takes a ride on this train known as The Commuter on a daily basis basis and on one mysterious day as Michael is taking a ride on this train this mysterious woman talks to Michael and makes him this offer that if he finds a certain passenger that happens to be on that train that he will get money for it in return but Michael isn't so sure if it is a serious situation or if it's just some kind of sick joke until he finds out later down the line that, yeah, Vera Farmiga, as this woman, is not playing around. So it's up to Michael to find this passenger on this train before time runs out. So when it comes to The Commuter, it is a film I was very much looking forward to. I was very interested in it. I like the trailer. Um, I know the premise isn't anything new, but I do like these mystery kind of movies. I mean, you can't go wrong with the movie starring Liam Neeson. And it is the fourth collaboration with director Hame Colette Serra and actor Liam Neeson, which is very cool. These two obviously love working with each other. Unknown was their first one, which I thought was okay. And then their second one was Nonstop, which I thought was a ton of fun. I thought that was a pretty solid film. And then we get to their previous one, Run All Night, which again was okay. It is better than Unknown, however. And it was at best a decent film, but it wasn't something I would ever watch ever again. But when I saw the trailer and just knowing this is their fourth collaboration, um, because really it does have the premise of non-stop with that in my mind I was like yes this could be very fun not expecting a groundbreaking film I just wanted a fun solid entertaining film and I definitely got that with the commuter now of course I gotta start off with Liam Neeson he is a ton of fun here I mean should that be a surprise I thought Liam Neeson did a very good job in this film he knows the kind of film he is in, he knows what he is making, and you could tell with the script that he has given that he just has a ton of fun with it. He just has such a nice screen presence. That's the thing about Liam Neeson. Even when he takes on roles like this, there's just something about his screen presence that is just so much fun to watch. and. He absolutely delivers that here. Someone else I thought was very good here, even though she wasn't on screen a lot, was Vera Farmiga. Uh, most of her role involves her being on the phone with Liam Neeson's character, Michael. But even with that, I thought she did a very good job. I thought she actually brought an intimidating presence to her. Like, I actually bought her as being this crazy, mysterious woman that's willing to play with others' minds. And considering, like I said, most of her role is her on the phone, you could still even feel that presence, even when you just hear her voice. And that just shows how talented of an actress Vera Farmiga is. Patrick Wilson, who I had no idea was gonna be in this film, and it's funny, cause he and Vera Farmiga are also in the Conjuring movies together, uh, but they're never on screen once together in this film, however. But I'm not gonna say what role he has because the trailers never show once what his role is. All I'm gonna say is Patrick Wilson was pretty good for the role he was given. You also have Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad and I really like seeing him, even though he's not in here that much and I'll get a little more into that later on, but I really liked him. As far as the performances of these other passengers on the commuter, I thought they were decent for what they were given. I did think the cinematography was pretty well lit. It's not this 
really extravagant cinematography or anything, but I think for a film like this, the cinematography, especially once they are up on this train, it is very good. And Hamid Khalid Sira does do a very solid job directing the film. He really does take you into this mystery. He really does take us into some of the action pieces. This is not like a full-blown action movie or anything, and that's really the same for non-stop because it is more of a mystery thriller type of film. But when you do get these action sequences, it is very cool. The best action sequence, all I'm going to say, deals with an instrument. I'm not going to even say what instrument, but it is really cool. Like, I really went holy crap at that scene because of how well choreographed that entire sequence was and how intense it was. This film is at times very intense. It is very thrilling. And when the film does deliver those thrilling moments, I think it does really succeed at that. And the mystery too. Even though I had an idea where the movie was leading up to its mystery, I did think it was very well done. I still found myself very interested. Even though despite the fact, yes, it is quite predictable. I am not going to deny that. I was still finding myself very immersed in the mystery. Now, honestly, if I wasn't, then I think the predictability of it would have been a major flaw with me. But because I was actually sucked into the story and I was sucked into the mystery and I really wanted Liam Neeson's character, Michael, to get out of this very scary situation, I just found myself caring of what was going on on screen and I did think the mystery was very well handled. And the climax too, despite the ridiculousness, I did think the climax was really good. I'm not going to really say anything more than that. And I do appreciate how the movie plays with your mind a little bit when uh, Michael is talking to these other passengers because he's trying to find that one passenger on the train. And when he's talking to all these other passengers and trying to figure out, okay, it might be that passenger. No, it might be that passenger. Just seeing this character trying to figure all this out, I think is what definitely adds to the fun factor to it and like I said even though the acting on the passengers aren't exactly like the best I do think when they are interacting with uh, Michael as he's trying to figure out what's going on I do think they showed some of their potential in their acting skills. Now when it comes to my flaws with The Commuter, like I said, it does get predictable um, as it goes on with this mystery. Granted, I was still engaged with the mystery, but yes, I am able to still see what is going on in the mystery, especially once we get to the climax. Once we do get to the climax of the film, that's when I'm like, yeah, I was able to predict um, who was that person. Person. I have no problem with it being ridiculous, but there were times where it did definitely push the ridiculousness a little bit, especially with one scene and the CGI in the scene. Oh my word, <laughs> was so bad. All I'm going to say is it is the start of the final act. This scene is what starts off the final act of this film. It's very CGI heavy and oh my goodness. It's really noticeable. You really, really can notice uh, the CGI. Even if you're not an expert on noticing noticeable green screen CGI effects in movies, I think even that person can easily notice how not good the CGI was in this particular sequence. If you've seen the film, you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. Oh my God. Also, as I mentioned, Jonathan Banks, he is in this film from good old Breaking Bad, a show I love watching. And Jonathan Banks, he was good here. The problem is that they waste his character. And of course, I can't say how, but just when the film had potential to do a lot of interesting things with his character, they really don't do much with him. And that's a shame. That really is a shame because I was really excited when I saw his name in the opening credits, first of all, because uh, they were showing like all the actors' names. And when I saw Jonathan Banks, I'm like, yes. And then when he shows up, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm very interested to see what they do with his role. He could really add something. And no, they... They don't really do anything with him. Vera Farmiga, I am quite disappointed she is not in this film like on screen as much. Like off screen when she's on the phone with Michael, yes. But I do wish that the film could have had more of her on screen. At least maybe just a couple of more scenes. It didn't have to be a whole lot. 
because I do understand the purpose of her being on the phone for the majority, but I do think a couple of more scenes with her on screen could have helped the film just a little bit more. And the final problem I do have with The Commuter, and it's my biggest problem with this film, is the first act. The first 20 to 25 minutes of this film was extremely tedious. And I'm not talking like, oh, it's a little tedious. No, it's extremely tedious. It is so boring. And I was actually worried for a while I was not going to enjoy this film because I did not enjoy the first act. It was so boring. I honestly did not care about Michael's family with the setup and the editing too. What the heck was all of that editing when the movie opened? It was so weird. Thank goodness the editing is actually better after that entire first 20 to 25 minutes and thank goodness that it's actually interesting after that point but that entire first act the first 20 25 minutes was very rough to sit through overall the commuter is exactly what i was hoping it would be a very entertaining a very fun and a very interesting mystery film even though i had an idea of where it was going with this mystery granted I was still very interested in it. Liam Neeson looked like he was having a lot of fun here. Hamid Khalid Sierra did a very solid job directing the film. There were some very intense and thrilling moments. There's some very impressive action sequences. And although, yes, it gets a little too ridiculous for its own good, it still doesn't lose its momentum for me. It's still able to have fun with itself and just do what it is set out to do. Just be a very entertaining movie. And I am going to give The Commuter three out of four stars. So you guys in the comments down below, let me know what you think about The Commuter and what is your favorite film out of the four that Hamid Khalid Sarah and Liam Neeson have collaborated on. This is Twenty Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power. Yeah.